How y'all doing? In my last video, I did a book of Charles R. Knight, you know, and, and the artwork that he did. And along with Burian, uh, who was an art artist at, his um, at the same time, both were very influential to paleo art, especially in the future. Uh, well, a lot of people, all, you can find dinosaur art all over the internet, deviant art and all that stuff, but to do it professionally for museums and, or paleontology articles and stuff like that, that takes a little bit more skill, more time and effort. In the issue number 86 of Prehistoric Times, number 2008, William Stout, who is also an artist who works in film and, 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 and cartoons and definitely in, in paleoartistry himself, he gives out a good 10 rules of being a paleo artist. I'll quickly run through them. Uh, keep your day job or live like a monk. Uh, let's see. And he that he kind of gives a bit of reality that, you know, if, the, if there was a pie chart of all the art in the commercial world, wildlife art is very sli slimmest one of that, and paleo art is a very sliver of that. Very hard to break through with this, so just so you kind of reality check. And never stop doing your science homework. Okay, yeah, you got to review the journals, know what species are out there, and, and so forth to be as accurate as possible, because you're not just drawing for exaggerated cartoons or bad toys. You're going to be doing this for um, museums or, you know, for murals and stuff like that, or paleontology mag you know, or, um, journals and stuff like that. Um, study paleobotany. And that makes sense. You want to put the plants that are appropriate for in, with the species you're drawing. Sure, if you can paint the same tree you know existed, but it could be in the wrong time, you don't put oranges or angiosperms, you know, or, or, or any other angiosperms in the Triassic period where they haven't evolved yet. Study geology, you know, know the region, you know, hey, not every place was a forest, you know, some, some were deserts and such, and the, and the geology reflects that. Never stop doing your art homework, Man, true, they always increase your skills. Be a good business person, just talk about copyrights and contracts, understanding all that, because, you know, because it's such a small sliver to be successful of, and you may not succeed, but what you do, you want to make sure that everything is legal and all that. Know and keep your rights, you know, there you go. Uh, use archi archival material. Use materials for your artwork that will last, you know, you know, don't want to use cheap stuff. No cardboard or anything. Don't bite off more than you can chew, that's true, and always know your, your limits. Sure, strive to sell, strive yourself to be better and better, but understand where you are at your moment, you know. Always do your best work. Yeah, that's a good quick ten, you know, quick um, rule, the eight rules, and it gives them out in detail. It's a nice two-page deal, but again, this is in um, issue 86 of Prehistoric Times. So, not easy to get into, you know, modern paleo art professionally, especially for educational purposes and, you know, for scientific, um, for sciences and stuff like that. But those who do make it, do it very well. You can see plenty of examples in dinosaur art, um, the world's greatest paleo art, edited by Stephen, Steve White, uh, forward by Philip J. Curry, famous paleontologist at the Royal Town Museum of Paleontology in Canada, and uh, Scott Sampson, uh, who also did the introduction. And this book features very, um, very good examples of the works of Julius Satonier, Gregory S. Paul, Mariko Anton, Douglas Henderson, Tom Marshall, John Civic, Louis Ray, John Conway, Robert Nichols, and Ralph Martin. And mo some of these guys I've known for a while. I've known Todd Marshall, Civic, Louis Ray. I haven't so much up until this book I know about Conway, Nichols, or Martin. But Douglas Henderson, he's done some of the great, some of the, he does some of the best Triassic work I've seen. Especially, I think, a lot of the stuff he did in New Mexico's Triassic. Um, Mariko Antoine, most beautiful Cenozoic art I have ever looked at. Uh, Gregory S. Paul, he's a famous one. You know, many of you paleophiles may know of him. Um, he does very good detailed skeletal drawings that are used by professionals all over the world. And Julius um, Satonier, who outside this book, has another book strictly on his work. And I'll get into that in time. But this book kind of covers... Um, each chapter is basically talks about the artist, shows not only a large amount of samples of work, but even some fold-outs of some of the bigger pieces. Shows the level of detail they put into this. And it, it interviews the artist about, you know, how did they get into this profession? What do they use? Are they painters? And do they use pen, pencils and pen? 
to paint or do they go to digital art or do they do both? And so each one explains how um, how they got into us and what and um, what this means to them and stuff like that. Very good insightful book about this. So yes, definitely check this out, Dinosaur Art, by um, edited by Steve by Steve White. So all right, thank you very much for watching. Y'all have a nice evening.